slums come up in different ways. Sometimes the way you and I buy a house, they also rent or have some papers and they buy that space. Now, given that the way that transaction happens is not formal, so uh, or even the ownership of the land is not known. Maybe there is a piece of land which the government owned or there is a private owner who owned and nobody can trace back. Uh, this is this continues to be a big problem. But when say I come from the rural place and uh, to in search of a livelihood uh, in the city and this is the land that is available to me and I am told that if I pay a particular my, uh, you know, amount of money, I can set up my shelter there and that's how I take up that uh, shelter. Now over generations my family is living there and I don't consider myself illegal because I paid but in government papers I am invisible or I only count when perhaps they also issue me voter ID cards but then they don't recognize my residency in the place. There is work that we have done where we have really helped these slum dwellers gain uh, tenancy and rightful property rights for the uh, slums or for the dwellings that they had rightful documentation. Uh, there we worked with the government to make them see the, you know, uh, the documents that they had. So government has a fixed A, B, C, D documents, but the, that is not the technicality that the poor understand. So if they had to demonstrate that they have been living in a particular period since uh, you know, 1990, say, if that is a cutoff. And uh, then the government say, everybody who is staying here since 1990, you get basic services. Now, how do I prove I am staying there since 1990? Like, I, I don't have a telephone bill. I don't have an electricity bill. But I do have a wedding card, which writes my address. My kids do have, like, if they go to school, they do have this address written on the school card. Or when I buy jewelry, because it is like my most prized, you know, uh, possession, I make sure that the shopkeeper writes my address. So those were the kind of papers that we helped, uh, try, you know, speaking with uh, the communities of what were those documents that they had, which could help them demonstrate their residential status over a period of time. We worked with the government to help them recognize some of these as documents that were considered acceptable. So that's a separate work uh, that has been done where some form legality and property ownership has been worked uh, for the slum dwellers. So I think these are examples of how issues emerge and they are resolved, but these are results that take time. There are two aspects why they take time. One is who you are working with, the communities and the basis of this entire work is faith and trust. And that cannot be built in a day. It has to take its own time. And second is who are you advocating with? It is the government. And again with the government, uh, because of the, uh, you know, the way the machinery is, the processes and the, the different uh, democratic processes that are and the mechanisms that are involved, again one has to be patient and continue to make a persistent, consistent case for what you need over a period of time.